Travel Essentials for Europe Part 2. Can you believe it? I missed a load of stuff. And uh, hey, I've got to be really, really thankful as well for the guys that commented. So you picked up on quite a few little issues that I overlooked, which I appreciate. Uh, before we go any further on that subject, I want to say a massive shout out to Margaret and David. Look at that. Happy Easter. We've never forget, forgotten you guys. Honestly, it's it was an absolute pleasure. Edinburgh Caravan and Motorhome Club site. Uh, it would have been three Christmases ago now, and they still remember us and send us a card. That is absolutely phenomenal. We absolutely love you guys. Th that is what Motorhome Life is all about. Meeting incredible people and uh, who still remember you and uh, and we're going to remember you so basically you know guys i've been uh, trying to get rid of my sticker packs we're um gradually getting through of them you know sort of like so here they are like they're all labeled up ready to go and uh, we're going to just mix them all up and what i'm actually going to do david and margaret i'm going to randomly right i'm going to randomly pick out one of these okay so um i'm hoping i'm really hoping because one of them has got a uh, super special little prize in isn't it so hopefully i'm just going to randomly i'm going to go oh, that one there okay so there's my pile over there and what i'm going to do now i've got a first class stamp on it we will be shipping it out to you guys tomorrow first class okay so best of luck guys on that one um but really appreciate that card coming through thank you very much so anyway on to the main subject the insurance travel for europe part two so one thing that i kind of forgot to mention is the fact that what you need to do is contact your insurance company and make sure everything is in place ready for you to take your motorhome abroad just double check everything is relevant and uh, the other thing they want to know is what countries you're going to if you're going to any unusual countries as regards uh, i'm going to pull a couple out of the bag like bosnia a lot of uh, insurance companies don't like bosnia they don't like albania uh, so just if you're going them kind of places you need to double check i think the you know sort of mainly like france and spain um but double check make sure and uh, obviously make sure your breakdown cover is up to date that's another thing you just don't want to I, I normally ring caravan guard uh before i'm sort of uh, uh, well uh, i think i did it last year just to uh, check everything i haven't done it just recently but but I'm probably due for another call to Caravan Guard and just make sure everything's in place uh, for my insurance traveling around. But um, it's all normally pretty good and they love to talk to you. Uh, so that is that one. And uh, the other thing that I forgot to mention is the sticker for UK. UK stickers now on the back, either on the back of your motorhome, the big oval shape one whatever shape you want i don't know but um i opted obviously for the little tiny stickers that go on the end of the number plate and uh, i did get like a, a little pack of them off like ebay or something so they just go on the end they're uh, shaped to go on a number plate so they're basically all you need they're absolutely perfect so that was the other one that i'd forgot to mention it was pretty important to be fair um the next one guys uh that came up is uh crit air stickers so obviously if you're going to germany into cities uh you will need a sticker for germany and obviously the same in france you would need that sticker to go in for example paris uh i think bordeaux is maybe in the is that up and coming 
in but there's a few big but if you're staying clear of the cities but what you've got to remember is guys if one small mistake and you end up sort of drifting in to that kind of area it's it's always like worth um getting a crit air sticker in your window and then it's it's there and you haven't got to worry about it and uh, so the other one guys that i don't have to worry about is the angles mort stickers the angles so uh it's for over three and a half ton you see it all the time on um european trucks where they have them all the way along the side of their trailers they have them on the front of their tractor or their lorry and uh, it's obviously to warn people that they um have tail swing and uh, obscure angles where they where they're articulated and the trailer might um yeah so basically that's what's that all about and uh, a lot of people are using them now on motorhomes a lot of people are using them on the bigger motorhomes and obviously that's another kind of requirement that you need um the other one that i missed which is a sort of massive one really is the reflective board on the back if you're carrying bikes on the rack on the rear of your motorhome um, I haven't got a bike rack on this one. Uh, we've actually talked just recently, uh, we've got mountain bikes and we're obviously off to Holland and uh, we're kind of toying with the idea of maybe uh, taking our bikes, but they will go in our garage with a bit of uh, manipulation in the back. We can get our bikes in there. So we have not got a bike carrier on the back of here, but if you carry bikes on the back of your motorhome, which I've done on my previous motorhomes, and uh, make sure you've got that reflective. Uh, I actually had a um, plug-in little uh, um, plate uh, to go on the back that had some little red lights on and everything um, back in the day um, and I just you just want to be seen when they all of a sudden when the um, motorway becomes purely unrecognizable through spray and then kind of road conditions we we've been in them condition all of a sudden the the um weather can change in the in the in an instance and uh, it's Oh my god you know there, there are like brake lights coming on and you're we i remember it so well coming uh, um past gent in belgium one day we had a horrendous thunderstorm and uh, the visibility was there there was we i think we actually ended up pulling off onto the hard shoulder because it became that dangerous um and you don't want anybody c coming in the back of you you need to be seen and uh, so yeah absolutely perfect that was another one that i was actually pulled up on um, and we, we appreciate all them comments guys all these comments guys we get and uh, it's just kind of like really good information uh, the other one that I forgot to mention is headlamp beam deflectors so guys um, now then I'm gonna confess uh, um. I, I, what I do, to be honest, I don't want to be driving at night. It's um, unusual to catch me driving at night. Uh, in a foreign country. I, I, I want to be obviously parked up. When it's night time, I want to be parked up. That's the aim from my point of view. But... Um, obviously, yes. I. Uh, but what I do is the headlight aim drop it down right down on the bottom setting so basically the the lamps are facing right down so you it's, it's anti-dazzle so you're not going to dazzle anybody uh when it facing right down and and these are really really effective on the fiat ducato um i don't know what 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 do you do what do you guys do <laughs> Be, so yeah it's, it's one of them things guys it's um but i've not had any issues at all with lowering them lights right down um okay just and the other one while we're on the subject of lights is obviously before you go on your trip just make sure uh we've done it before guys on these videos where we have um if you haven't got no one to help you push the brake pedal down to check your rear lights uh wed wedge some in um, in there on the brake pedal with the ignition on and uh, just make sure your brake lights are working this has got one at the top and two either side uh, so yeah you just want them to be working uh, as regards 
everything else as well reverse lights rear fog lights indicators everything we want it all working uh, before you go you don't want any um any little misdemeanors for anybody to uh, pull and you know what it's like in england any misdemeanor to to pick you up uh on a you know a tail light out or some of that we just don't want it um just check all your lights and uh the other thing is obviously before you go check your tire pressures and your condition of tires another very very important thing i'm only thinking of you guys you guys uh it can cost you um <laughs> it, it can change your holiday from um, a really great time to total disaster waiting on the side of a motorway uh, for a, a, a tire company to come out when and try ringing a tire you know i know yeah okay um the insurance companies will sort it out but it's a very very time consuming operation and you could and you just don't want to be sat on that hard shoulder for two and a half three hours waiting for someone to come out and uh, um attend your uh, punch your ripped out sidewall whatever it may be and uh, believe me when them sidewalls go if there's um, any signs of it's over do you know what i mean and and not only that it can damage the side of your motorhome it will take out your <laughs> it can do all sorts of damage you, you you can potentially crash with a front blowout it, there's all sorts of scenarios that can happen so just i'm just put it out there guys make sure your tire is in good condition uh make sure they're not pat you know we like i say we always like um when you get in that sunshine direct sunshine try and cover them tires over to uh prevent that um premature wear on the side walls and stuff so we're gonna leave that there um and uh we were brought to the attention as well about these uh, in Spain, thank you, Robert, for this one. Um, you were having a good laugh at me last night, I expect. <laughs> you can have another laugh tonight, mate. So, uh, hello, Robert, down in sunny Spain. And uh, I did see you was parked up in um, Alamonte. The man from Alamonte says yes uh, the other day. And, um, yeah, so he was saying that the Spanish now are actually... Um, looking at uh, introducing these led like road flares that stand in the road and and all that kind of stuff so they're, they're looking so i've already been on amazon actually they're available on amazon shooting a picture of these like road flares a two-pack led uh they're under 15 quid i think uh emergency disc beacon with nine flashing modes flashing wards uh warning roadside flares with magnetic base and hook you can even stick one on the side of your door um, and all them scenarios, you know, like I say, the more lights and stuff you, you need to be seen is um, all the better. Oh, while we're actually on the subject, so um, I was actually going to... Um mentioned this the other day uh, our good friend uh, mr paul stevens um <laughs> so uh, we know paul uh, we've uh, from the spanish trip he was uh, following a lot of our um, route down there some of them the um, lighthouse park up down there at uh, el miramar how good was that paul amazing wasn't it you were missing it already mate i know it but um paul was um telling me the uh, he, he was asking me the other day that about um tow cars and uh i i what actually i saw paul was the fact that you ended up getting your tow car to take with you and uh then i saw you um said that you if i actually go to spain i might have to borrow someone's trailer and that was the the exactly what i was thinking about because obviously in spain they do not like um the frames uh they want them on a trailer uh off the um yeah so you you know all that you know so that's another thing um spanish um and oh, oh the other one um so i'll tell you the other one as well we're on the uh these are just randomly uh cropping up in my uh mind is the flip-flops um i'm not gonna say because when it's hot you don't want anything on your feet too much do you nothing too heavy but um they do take a dim view to people uh wearing flip-flops uh in control of their vehicles so um 
watch out so uh, and the other thing to do is obviously you just got to be super careful there was um, I haven't heard anybody heard recently of any um, corrupt police any any anything like that any corruption um, there was um, all sorts of stuff going all that at one stage but um, and it seems to have quietened down a little bit now um, but yeah just make sure um, are they police that's ushering me over to pull on the side of the motor you, do you know what I mean um, yeah so that was the other one just uh, putting a few another little um, angles out there on things um, so I my next little category so we're cut we're finishing off it's not gonna be a majorly long video tonight but we're finishing off but so the last little section is I can I do carry a um, oh did we do yeah we're, we're coming to that actually a small selection of like tools I have a Swiss Army knife with all the gadgetry on there for all them sort of little bits and pieces you know what it's like um, and I have a ratchet screwdriver I have a little torque set I have a few pairs of um, not over the top size adjustables little small adjustables that you can um, nip up things and hold little nuts and stuff like that um, so I carry a couple of them um, and uh, the next thing I'm going to mention is the fact the spare wheel so we talked about a puncher i probably should have put it in there obviously i'm always uh i am mr spare tire <laughs> you know because i've got my bottle jack in there i've got my long chrome breaker bar for the wheel nuts with an impact 21 mil socket to break off them wheel nuts make sure you can undo your wheel nuts if you've got a locking wheel nut make sure you've got the key to undo the locking wheel nut they get lost they get mislaid you will have to cut it off um so yeah so spare wheel if you're going to change your wheel make sure you've got all your kit on your scene and uh, the vehicle is super safe you've jacked it in a really good jacking point it's not going to fall off the jack um, these some of these scissor jacks we we're always mentioning it these scissor jacks they're built for the van fiat ducato but when you've got a three and a half ton motorhome on the body of that chassis it's a game changer the last thing last but not least i'm gonna throw in uh, a tow rope i have a small tow rope in the back with a couple of eyelets on it and are we actually the first time we actually used it was in el Bafira. i will tag in a picture uh, of the instance when we used it and uh, our good Ken, uh, friend keith down there um got in a bit of a predicament in a little bit of a rut of a um a drainage kind of channel when he was pulling off his pitch and he got like lodged and uh, uh, so we had to get his um, um, son with a big uh, fat Porsche and uh, he had a tow bar on the tow and eye on it uh, got tow and eye in the back and uh, we he literally we, so we got the tow rope two eyes and yanked him out <laughs> so it's just them odd occasions when you need these kind of items um, and uh, obviously if you get stuck in a muddy field and uh, a guy there is a guy with a tractor and he's got nothing to tug you out you can supply the tow rope and say oi mate hook onto this and uh, drag me out of this mud that is it guys for me tonight i hope i've um uh, clarified everything there that i missed last night and if i've missed any more <laughs> in uh, throw us another comment guys and uh, um we'll try i think we've just about sort of like covered every possibility and angle and that's exactly what we're doing i put these videos out for anybody that are newbie people we we know guys all the experienced people that have traveled abroad you know what you need and you know what you get by with and uh, we're just sort of putting these little angles out uh, to make it a better motorhome world for everybody so thanks for watching guys and we will catch you next time on the next video thank you